Continuing the last part of lesson 3-5, we are going to talk about story problems. And so today what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about how to set up story problems. We're not going to solve them today. So if you look at number 7, um, the directions say for each scenario, define the variables. So that's the first thing we have to do is define variables. Then we're going to write a system of equations. Now today we don't need to solve it. We're just doing those two things. And so let's talk about what they mean. So defining variables, when we use variables in math, like if we use x for something or y for something, if we're solving a real life problem, we have to know what that stands for. So what does x mean? Does it mean like, you know, bunny rabbits or cookies or how much money or what does it mean? So we have to tell what we're solving for and what it means. And then to write a system, we're going to write two equations um, to make a system of equations. So let's just read the problem. It says theater tickets cost $12 for adults and $9 for children. So let's just stop and think about that for a second. If you, let's say you have to pay as an adult and then you're taking your little sister that, you know, as a child, so that it's going to cost you $21 to go. Okay, well, what if we have three adults and one child? So you're going to do three times 12 and one times nine because that's what you have. So what is changing here is not the prices. The prices are fixed. I know what they are. What's changing is how many adults and how many children are going. So the question is how many adults and how many children? And it's really important to ask yourself that question because that's how you figure out what your variables are going to stand for and what you're solving for. So the variables that I don't know, the things that I don't know is how many adults. So let's just say A is equal to the number of adults. And C can be equal to the number of children. Now you can use whatever letters you want. It doesn't matter. You can use X and Y or A and B or P and Q. It doesn't matter. But what matters is that you tell me what that stands for. You have to know that A is not how much money you're paying for adults because you see we already know that. But it's how many adults are going. Now in order to write a system, in order to find out how many adults and how many children, since I have two variables, I have to have two equations. There's no other way to solve this problem. So I need two equations. So I know that going in, I have to have two equations. So let's read the rest of the problem and see what else it says. It says the total cost for 15 adults and children. Now that doesn't mean 15 adults and 15 ch children. It means 15 people. What is it that I don't know? If I take 15 people, and it costs $153. I don't know how many adults or how many children. So that reemphasizes what I just wrote down. So in order to find out how many adults and how many children attended the theater, I'm going to have to write an equation about what it just told me. So let's take the cost first, okay? It costs $12 for every adult. So I'm going to write that. That's how much money we pay for the adults that are going. And what does it cost for children? cost nine dollars for every child that goes. Now altogether that's gonna cost how much money? Well the number of adults and children that went it cost a hundred and fifty three dollars. So since this equation is talking about money twelve dollars, nine dollars, a hundred and fifty three dollars, all of those things are talking about money. Okay? Now the next equation, what else do I have? I'm talking about how many adults, not money anymore, just how many adults. So I have a number of adults and a number of children, but I don't know how many. So how many adults plus how many children? Altogether, how many people was it? There's your system. Now today we're not going to solve that. Today we're just setting it up. That's all we're doing. So you're going to do two things today. You're going to define your variables, and you're going to figure out how to write the system. So you have to figure out what pieces of information do you use and how do you use them correctly to write a system of equations. So let's try another one. Your science class has nine assessments, okay? Those are assessments or tests and quizzes. So you have nine tests or quizzes altogether. It says tests are worth 100 points and quizzes are worth 50 points. There are 600 points possible. Okay, so let's stop and think about what we're talking about. We're talking about points and tests and quizzes. And so what is it that I don't know? Do I know how many points everything is worth? The answer is yes, I do know that. So that's not what my variables are going to stand for. What don't I don't what don't I know? I don't know the number of tests. How many tests were there? Were there one test or two tests or were all of them tests? And I don't know the number of quizzes. 
So maybe there were seven tests and two quizzes, or maybe it was seven quizzes and two tests. I don't know. So I'm going to say T and Q. All right, so I need to write two equations concerning T and Q. And one of them is going to have to do with points. So look everywhere it says points. Let's write an equation about points. For every test, it's 100 points. So 100 points per test. And what about quizzes? And all together, all the tests and all the quizzes are how many points? Now, if you write that equation first or if you write it second, it doesn't matter. So if you wrote your other equation before you wrote the one about points, that's not a problem. Okay, let's think about the other thing we don't know. What's the other thing that it told us that we haven't used yet? Nine assessments. So nine assessments, something is making nine. What is making nine? It's the number of tests and the number of quizzes. This says nothing to do with points. That's the system right there. So again, today we're not going to solve this. You're just going to write it. Okay, and last, Krista has a total of 25 dimes and quarters that are worth $2.80. So she has this jar with money in it, dimes and quarters only. So 25, that's not telling me how much things are worth. She, that's telling me the number of coins that she has. This is telling me the value. Okay, now this one's a little bit harder because you have to read into it a little bit more. Things that you already know really though. What is it that I don't know? Do I know how much is in the jar? How much money? Yes, it's $2.80. Do I know how much a dime is worth? Yes. So then that's not a question. What is the question? The question is, I don't know how many dimes there are, and I don't know how many quarters there are. So let's write that for our definition of variable. So I'm going to say D is equal to how many dimes. And Q is equal to how many quarters. So that's defining my variables. And just so you know, you will have to define variables and that will be worth points. So you'll need to make sure that you're understanding how to recognize what it is that you're trying to find. And you can always tell by the question, how many dimes and how many quarters, basically that's what you're looking for. Okay, now for our system, we're gonna write an equation about the value and we're gonna write an equation about how many. It doesn't matter which one you write first. So if I want to write something about how many dimes and how many quarters, I know that there's 25 dimes and quarters. That's the total. And that's made up by the number of dimes plus the number of quarters. Okay, now the, the other one about the value, this is where you have to kind of think about it a little bit harder with some things that you already know. So I know that the total value of all everything together is $2.80. So how do we get $2.80? Well, we take the dimes and quarters. Well, how much is a dime worth? it's worth 10 cents. Now, if you write 10 D, but you have 2.8 over here, then you're saying $10 is a dime because this is $2.8. So you have to decide, do you want to do this in dollars and cents? If you want to do it in dollars, then you're going to have to put 0.10. If you want to do it in cents, then that's fine. You could do that. But instead of $2.80, you would have to say 280 cents. So it doesn't really matter. Um, the mistake, though, that people make is they'll put the 2.8 and then they'll put 10D, and so that would be bad. Okay, so you're going to put 0.10D plus. All right, so then what's a quarter worth? It's worth 25 cents, so how would you write that? So 0.25Q, and there's your system. Now, like I said, today we're not solving anything. We're just practicing writing the systems, and then we will be solving them as we move forward. So if you have any questions, please make sure you ask and make sure that you get the practice finding how to define your variables and then practice doing a system of equations and thinking about the two types of things that you're looking for. So is it money value and how many or is it how many tests and what the value of the tests are? So you're going to be writing equations about all of that. And that wraps it up for this lesson.